Let's spend a little time today talking about Pareto Principle. Uh, I think this is one of these really simple tools and techniques that are out there that uh, has so many applications. It's just a really powerful process improvement tool to put in your tool bag. And whether you say it's associated with Lean or whether you say it's associated with Six Sigma or whether you say it's just one of the many tools, techniques that I have, um, I think it really doesn't matter. You'll see that it has uh, many applications in business and in your personal life. Uh, for those of you maybe who aren't never heard the term or aren't familiar with the Pareto Principle, uh, you may have heard it called like the 80-20 rule. And just to give you some examples, see if any of these maybe ring a bell for you or hit home. 80% of the problems come from 20% of the employees. Um, people who teach school, you know, whenever I do this kind of work with uh, school teachers, I make that 80% of the problems come from 20% of the students or people that work with kids like in camps and 80% of the problems come from 20% of the kids and, and you just see the heads nod and people are like, mm, I get it, I know exactly what you're talking about now. Maybe in a business environment, 80% of your sales come from 20% of your products. 80% of your sales come from 20% of your customers. 80% uh, of your expenses come from 20% of your expense categories. And, and so, you know, sort of the generic Pareto principle is that 80% of your problems come from 20% of your issues. And I think the key here is that none of us have enough time to work on all the things we need to work on. There's lots of good projects out there. There are lots of problems that need to be addressed. And I think one of the real keys to being a good manager is figuring out, well, what problems do I need to work on? What issues do I need to address? And Pareto Principle just helps us figure that out, kind of shows us where we need to, to apply our resources. And you usually think of Pareto Principle being like a Pareto chart. And so that's what we're going to walk through today is using Excel to figure out how to create a Pareto chart. Um, here's an example of a ship and label error. Uh, here's this 80-20 rule, 80% 80 of the problems may be attributed to 20% of the cause categories and we can certainly see in this little graph here a uh, number of defects along the y-axis. Here they have off-center printing, smeared print, missing labels, loose labels, and other. And there's, there's no numerical data on this chart, but you can just clearly see that off-center printing is the biggest problem area and that's where we need to focus our attention. We don't need to focus our attention and our resources on loose labels. So I'm going to walk you through a Pareto analysis of motor failures. Um, this is one that I did at one of the companies where I was working at. We made electric motor, motors, Baldor Electric. Um, I already put some data in and hopefully you can sort of get a feel for where data like this would come from and and nothing special about what's already here. Um, I think the key here is we look at sort of what the part failure is. So there are different re reasons that these motors failed. Uh, there was a bearing failure, capacitor failure, if it had high amps, keyway interference, rotor rub, rotor slip, shaft break, uh, TIR, total indicated run out, vibration, excessive vibration, or winding grounded. And then we had to count the number of motors that failed because of each one of those. So this has been something that had been going on for a period of time and they've been keeping account of the failures. And what I'd like to do is get that into a Pareto distribution. I'd like to see where are my high failure rates and do I have this 80-20 rule? Um, probably just by looking at this data because this is a small amount of data. You can already spot you know, where the big problem areas are if you have a lot more data it's maybe not as easy to just spot visually so we'll kind of walk our way through how would we how would we create a Pareto chart that would be useful to show people exactly what we're seeing so first thing I want to do is I want these failures not sorted in alphabetical order but I'd like to have them sorted in count order so I'm gonna highlight I'm going to go to data, and sort, and I'm going to say sort by that column part, but instead I want to sort by count, and I don't want it smallest to largest, I want it to go largest to smallest, 
and now I can see I've got the the failures that have the highest count on top working their way down and next I'd like to get a sum for that and I go to my home screen and just go to auto sum there you may uh, input the formulas maybe how you do it in Excel maybe use auto sum so there's different ways to get this kind of data uh, so this tells me that my total Yeah, uh, is I had 2,094 failures in each one of these categories. Show me how many I, failures I had from each category. And next, I want to create a cumulative percentage. I want to know what percent this 800 is of the 2,094. And then I want to add the 800 and the 630 together, and I want to know what percent that is of the 2,094 and keep working my way down on this cumulative percentage until I get to the very bottom and then that ought to be a hundred percent. So to do that I'm going to input a formula here and again you can do this a couple of different ways. You might insert an extra column and just keep adding one row to the next row but I'm going to do this in one step. I'm going to say I want this to be the sum from B5 this is going to look kind of strange in the beginning, to B5. And I'm going to divide that by that total. And I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of that 5. Oops. I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of the first 5, which means I want that 5 to stay frozen. And put a dollar sign in front of that 15. I'm going to copy that formula down. And now I've got a cumulative percentage. So if you look at the next row, it says, all right, sum from B5 to B6 and divide by B15. Uh, if we work our way down here, it says sum from B5 to B8. So you can see that B5 is that dollar sign made it stick. It didn't copy down. But then what it goes down to keeps copying down. So it goes B5 to B8 b5 to b9, b5 to b10, and then I always want to divide by b15. So now I've got a cumulative percentage. Next what I want to do is start trying to chart this information. So I'm going to highlight all of the data. I'm not going to highlight the total. I really don't need that. Uh, I'm just going to highlight my categories and all of my data. And I'm going to go to insert. I'm going to insert a column and I get this column chart and it, it sort of looks a little bit like what I'm after. We still need to do a little dressing up here. But I've got all my different categories, bearing failure, winding ground, rotor rub, etc. And it looks like I've got the count in there. Uh, you can see that bearing failure was 800. Here the winding ground was 630. So that looks about right. Cumulative percentage looks sort of funny down here. And it's because I have numbers like 38%, which if you remember that's 0.38. So that really doesn't look like the way I want it to look. I need to I need to do a little work on that. So I need to work on this cumulative percent. And I'm going to select that. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change the series chart type. And instead of a column, I want to make that look like a line. So it looks like a line now and it really doesn't look any better. You can't see it at all. There's still the problem that that it's down in the uh, anywhere from 38% to 100% which is just 0.38 to 1. So it's just a line that's way down here on the bottom. So I still need to do a little bit more work on that. So I'm going to select that again. And this time I'm going to go to Format Data Series. And I'm going to say Secondary. And now that's starting to look better. So now I've got uh, one data series formatted over here. This is the count or the frequency of the errors that my columns are showing. And then I got a second axis over here that's got my cumulative percent. And that's what my line's showing. And that looks a lot better. Um, I might want to go ahead and select this axis. 
and since it is a percentage I really don't need it to go to 120 percent I just want it to go to 100 percent so now I've got a Pareto distribution um, I can print this out or I can show this on a during a presentation and although the data tells me the exact same thing certainly with a Pareto chart it's really easy to see where we need to focus our resources um, sometimes people don't see where all the problems are coming from and so I may have folks that are you know thinking hey we need to work on total indicated run out because that's kind of the area that they're involved with but they really need to see what's the impact to our business and the impact to our business tells us look I don't have enough time to work on all the problems that are out there um, eventually I'd like to eliminate all the problems but right now we got to get the bang for our buck and where we would get the bang for our buck is we need to work on these two problem areas you know the first two problem areas which would be twenty percent of our categories created sixty eight percent of our failures so this wasn't quite the eighty twenty rule exactly uh... this looked like the eighty thirty rule because eighty percent of our failures came from thirty percent of our failure types uh, if I'm going to spend my resources, my time, my um, R&D efforts, any kind of product changes or product design changes, what I need to address is bearing failures and windings that are grounded. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of what Pareto analysis, Pareto distribution can do for you. That gives you a good idea of how to use Excel to, to just put data in and, and make a simple Pareto analysis. And the real key here is that it leads you or guides you into where you need to spend your resources.